All right, so here I am. Okay, now we are going to look at, the other day you took a quiz. Um, you will have another opportunity. Um, the grading thing I'm still trying to sync up. I was doing grades last night. Um, well, more than last night, like most today and last night. I'm still trying to sync up. So don't freak out when you're seeing some of those grades. Progress book in the end is going to be where you got to look at. Canvas and progress book are having some issues with grading in the syncing. So, but progress book is where you really want to look. Okay. Um, but in doing it, and in saying that, you guys took a quiz yesterday in 15 points. What I'm going to allow you to do is um, the next class we have, which will be Tuesday, you'll have another opportunity to take a quiz similar to that. We'll be the same one. It'll be similar. And I will take the best score. <laughs> And your best set, that'll be the grade you get. So you have two chances. It's going to be pretty much the same type of quiz. It's just different, you know, sentences I'm going to use. Um, I was as I was looking at the quiz. Then these are a couple of the trouble spots that I saw. Uh, these are questions that you know the ones I guess you got you, you got tricked on the most. So the first one here. Now we're not saying you have to jump out of a plane. Should there be a comment in there? Yeah. Where? Why is it? Why should there be a comment here? Because it's uh yeah no you're right yeah, well you know, the main thing is you know there should be a comment that's the main thing. there should be comment it's in one of those introductory words in this one it's like now okay now we're not saying you have to jump out of a plane okay it's almost like it's introducing the rest of that <coughs> sentence right? so that's why now when you need a comma there after the now this next one was a tricky one. The act of leaving our comfort zone puts us in a vulnerable position and leaves us with an onslaught of questions running through our heads. Should there be a comma in there? If so, where? Should there be a comma in there? If so, where? Anybody? Okay, so you're saying after position and the end because you're saying, oh, wow, these are two long, you know, potentially clauses. And if you have two independent clauses, you have that comma and the end. The thing is, and I did do this one to trick you. Um, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I wanted to see where you were at. And, and this and this is probably the one that was missed the most. This and there's another one there right by each other. You have the act of leaving our comfort zone puts us in a vulnerable position. That's a good independent clause. You have a subject, okay, an act, all right, and you have your predicate over here, okay, and puts. So, you know, subject predicate, it makes sense. The thing is, if I take this out, if I just wanted to put, leaves us with an onslaught of questions running through our heads, is that actually a, an independent clause? Is that a complete sentence? It's not. You're actually just combining, that and is really just combining another predicate in there. So, since it's not combining two independent clauses, you don't put a comma there. It's just combining two predicates. I hope that makes sense. Right. Now, if I would have just put it in here, then you're right. Then it should have been a comma if I put it in there. But it didn't. Okay, so that's why I think some people got that one wrong at times. All right. A couple of the other ones. Justin will go to the Ashland High School football game when he finishes work. Should there be a comma in here? Anyone willing to try? You're right. No, we shouldn't. Why shouldn't there be? Because your your um subordinate conjunction, your your dependent uh, supporting clause, dependent clause, is at the end of the sentence. If I say if I would have just moved this around, put it here at the beginning, when he finishes work, comma, Justin will go to the National High School football game. That's when you use the comma. But since it's at the end of the sentence, there is no comma. Okay? So if you remember, we say dependent clause, comma, independent clause. But if it's at the end, you don't use it. Sarah's favorite activities are singing on stage and relaxing in the sunshine. Which sounds wonderful. All right. Comma or no comma in here? And so where? Anybody? Anyone willing to try? No one's going to try. You're right. No. Because you have your subject, okay? You have your predicate, okay? Our scene, predicate. On stage, 
Uh, so our on our singing on stage and relaxing. You have again that compound predicate, not independent clauses. Because I couldn't just say relaxing in the sunshine. That's not a complete thought, not a complete sentence. So hence, no comma has to go there. All right. So hopefully that's understandable and you get that one. All right. Now, what we're going to do, so we went over that. We're going to talk a little bit about the content vocabulary. Oh, and then we're going to discuss the lottery, the story, the lottery. All right. So, but before we get our computers, let's look at some just content vocabulary uh, slides. There it is. And as we're looking at these, I'm going to ask you questions about the story. So, hopefully you read it. Hopefully you enjoyed it um, as you were reading it. So... The lottery was written by Shirley Jackson. Here's what we're looking at. Again, comprehending some difficult text, a little bit more difficult in being able to find some more, uh, you know, uh, understanding of these. So that's really the, the goal here from the lottery. All right, Shirley Jackson herself is, you know, she, unfortunately she died rather young. She's an American author, wrote short stories and novels. Her most famous work is The Lottery. Okay, so the lottery which combines a peaceful small town America setting with a rather interesting ending. Did anyone see that ending coming in the lottery? Okay, you didn't see that ending coming. All of a sudden, usually when you think of a lottery, what do you think? Money. Money. You think how many people would want to win a lottery usually? Okay, just like four. What's all right? Well, that's fine. I mean, I, I would like to win a lottery. Now, this lottery, though, would you want to win this one? As you were reading it, did you get a sense that maybe some people weren't exactly thrilled with this lottery? You get a sense that wait, not, not everybody's like running up there uh, to get these, you know, to get this ticket. You know, and then when her husband gets it, is she happy, ecstatic? No. No. She's like, oh, oh no, well, let's do this. It wasn't fair. You rushed them. Okay. So keep that in mind. So it's a setting. Uh, the tone of most of her works is odd and macabre. Uh, with an in, uh, impending sense of doom, often framed by very ordinary settings and characters. And you can see that in this story. They're ordinary setting. It seems like a nice little small town, good old Ashland. You know, they're just getting together for a nice summer you know, day. Let's go have some fun. And then, you know, let's stone them. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. This got twist. That's a little bit, you know, odd. Okay. So when it was first published in 1948 in the New Yorker, it generated more negative letters from readers than any other story previously published by the magazine. People were canceling their subscriptions. They were like, I'm not going to read it. Like, if you're going to publish something like this, this is disturbing. I don't want to read this. That's like, what's the controversy now? There's, there's people, have people saw the, the one controversy with Netflix. People are canceling because of one show. Uh, uh, I forget. Yeah, it's, called, I, I have no idea what it's about. I just remember reading something. Of people are canceling their subscription over this. Because some like eleven year old is dancing and like working. Um, so like these, okay, so they're it's legal for child pornography. Okay, well I don't really know much about it, so I don't really want to comment. I'm hoping that's not it. Um, but I know that's a controversy. But people, so this has been happening for years. Okay, this is even in 1940. If you're like, oh, I don't like this, I'm going to cancel it. Okay, over this story. So I think that this story is what got them, sent them over the top. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you posted it. Okay. Um, we talked about these literary terms the other day, the archetype, the similar symbolism, point of view, irony, and suspense. So we're going to talk about them, and as we're going over it, start thinking about how they are used in the lottery. Okay, This will be important for you later on. Okay, So an archetype is just a typical character, an action or a situation that seems to represent universal patterns of human nature. Um, according to Professor Jordan Peterson, an archetype is a behavioral pattern and a reflection of that behavior in a society. We're going to look at this piece here. Hopefully, it'll give you a better understanding of what an archetype is. And I just messed that up. Wow. Why is it? Oh, dear Lord. Sorry, guys. Wait a Okay, it's not playing. Yeah, it is. I know why it's not playing. 
because I have these headphones on. So, yes. Uh, all right. We'll get back to that. I'll go back. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is what happens when you try new technology and you're starting to use it because I have these on. I turned off the audio there. So we'll get back to it. An archetype, if we watch that video, it showed that throughout years, there is actually uh, in different societies, you have these different characters and stories that are passed on throughout. Um, and there are different traditions that we will see throughout uh, things. Okay. So, um, All right, as I am going to figure this out, we'll take a pause. And since we're going to need computers, we have computers outside the door. If you guys want to go get one, just don't open them up just yet. Just start. What's that? Is it over here? Um, it should be the one outside our door. It should be the one. Mr. Quarter stolen. Oh, did he really? Well, okay, well, let me look. Let me make sure which one we have then. I've just seen him mailing a card outside your door for Chromebooks. Well, Mr. Court, you never know with him. <coughs> Okay. We should have the ones on uh, 123, I guess. Sorry about that. So the ones outside 123. You're gone. All right. So you guys go get yours too, and then let me figure this out here. I appreciate that. What's that? Um, so you don't have to talk to me about that. I have no idea what <laughs> But anyway, so innocent corrupted in this, not, not this picture. Actually, I'll probably have to stop using pictures of my daughters because they're going to be coming here soon. Um, but those are my kids when they were younger. And it's a lovely Browns attire. But anyway, in this story, the lottery, in the story lottery, is there an example of maybe some in some innocent person being corrupted? Yeah. The lady's son who had to draw for her. If you look at good old little Davy. First of all, I love how they call it. little Davy is such a just oh little Davy's here. Oh, it's little Davy. What does little Davy do in, at the end of this story? What does little Davy do? Son to Tessie Hutchinson, very young. What do they have in his hand? They give him a what? They give him a stone. What do they do to Tessie at the end? They stone him for death. Right. So what is he doing at the end? Not only is he killing someone, who is he killing? He is participating in killing his mom with a stone. Okay? Why do you think they even do this? Why do you think they do this? To control population. Well, I mean, just killing one person a year going to really control population? A sacrifice to God. Oh, could be. Oh, we can talk about that for fun. I, I don't know. Do you think anyone there seemed like they were enjoying it? Maybe it was just an old tradition. Of the is that a, like is that are some traditions maybe we should keep? But they keep it now by giving little Davy, a nice four or five year old kid, a stone to help participate in the killing of his mom. What is this doing to him? It's making him carry on the tradition. Right, because he's doing it. He's it's making him think this is what we do. And even if I part as long as I participate in this. I've been participating. Hey, you know, I you can tell the story to this kid. Oh, I remember when I stoned my mom to death. You know, like this is what they do. Everybody does it, even the kids. And in some ways, that's how you get people to do things that maybe they shouldn't be doing. Okay, so keep that in mind as you're looking at this. So this innocent young kid is participating in the death of his mom. So, um, something to keep in mind as you're reading this. The next thing, all right, we're going to go with symbol. Now, a symbol is just something that's an object that stands or represents something else. Symbolism tries to give you a deeper understanding of things. Look at these symbols. What does a line symbolize? When we think line, we think what? 
scary. Uh, Lion is also, a lot of times we think Lion is very strong, king of the jungle, strong, king of the jungle <laughs> courageous possibly. Okay, you get courage from that lion. How about a rose? Rose, you used to think, what is that looking at? Me. Besides just being a flower, it symbolizes what? Love. Love. Good. How about eagle? America. America, freedom. Okay, yeah. Not just a bird, you know. What does that symbolize? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. not good. Poison, yeah. How about this? That's what? An idea. An, an idea, good. So now, in this poem, uh, anyone ever read Shel Silverstein? A wonderful poem. So uh, anyway, it's uh, this poem. It's just somebody up on a diving board. You've been up on that diving board, making sure that it's nice and straight. You made sure that it's not too slick. You made sure it can stand the weight. You made sure that the spring is tight. You made sure that the cloth won't slip. You made sure that it bounces right, and your toes can get a grip. And you've been up there since half past five, doing everything but dive. All right. Okay, on the diving board. You now, the diving board, this place where you go, you jump up. But what else could that diving board represent? Can somebody think, what else could that represent? Yeah. It's a cool word. Procrastination. Okay, procrastination. Excellent. Like, I'll find something. I'll just, oh, I'll just step over here, or I'll do this, or, you know, I can do this. Exactly. So it's not just a board, piece of wood, and, you know, it extends out over a pole. It also can symbolize that idea. How many of us procrastinate? How many of us think, oh, I'll do this later. You'll find something, just the me most menial thing to do, just so I don't have to do that, you know, math homework. In English, I know you guys want to do, so I understand that. Too. You, you never do that. But, but, oh, I'll do this. Oh, you know what? Let me do this first. So let me do this first. So that's what symbolism is. It takes just this object, a board, and then it says, wait, that can be something more. There's some more depth to that. Okay? It's not just that board. It's this idea of procrastination. Excellent. All right. Point of view. I'm going to run through this quick because it's pretty easy. It's just a perspective that the story is told. The literary points of view. First, third person limited. Third person omniscient. And, again, first person just uses I. You're part of the story. Okay? So that's pretty good. Limited, we talked about that's just one uh, – it's uh, the character that the narrator is not part of the story, but looks at it from one person's perspective. So maybe it's looking at it just from my perspective, what I'm thinking, but nobody else. Okay? Omniscient looks at the story from everybody's perspective. Okay? Tells you what all the characters are thinking or feeling, okay, at this time. All right? The one that I'm thinking you probably haven't heard is third person objective. The narrator, again, not part of the story, it's third person, so it wouldn't be. The third person pronouns are used. Uh, it's an observer just tells you what's said, done, does not get into anybody's thoughts. That's very important, especially for this story. Okay? You think about this story. Okay? So it's not looking into anybody's minds. We only find out what the characters say and do. All right? So in this story, I'm just going to stop here. because Why is it so important to use the objective? Point of view in this story alone. The lottery. Why is that the perfect one to use for the lottery? If you get inside anybody's mind, right? Yes. Yeah. It's not biased. It's just telling you what's going on. Yeah. It kind of lets us not know what's happening. Because if you get inside anyone's mind, say right here, say we're going to do a lottery, and the person who uh, drew the black dot. Fails the class automatically. Everyone else gets an A. Everyone else gets an A, but the one person who draws a black dot would get an F. Okay? And as soon as you walk through the door and we say, oh, I publicize this next day, Monday or Tuesday, that's what we're going to do. Everyone, we're going to draw it and, you know, we'll, we'll know what you're getting for the rest of the year and we're just going to relax and do nothing. Yeah. Everyone get, except for that one person got an F. Sorry about that. So as you were coming in and I'm writing this story, you're not killing that person. They're just getting an F. Okay? So, as, in coming, as you're coming in this, the door, and if I'm writing a story about it, what are you going to be thinking? If I write from anybody's perspective, what are they going to be thinking? And coming through that door, you know this is the day I'm either going to get an A or an F, depending on what I choose. I hope I don't, well, I hope I don't get the black dot. I hope I don't get the black dot. What do you think everybody that morning going to that lottery was thinking? Oh, my God, what if I get the black dot? 
Exactly. Why am I doing it? I can't believe I don't want to get the black dot. Please don't let it be me. Every person there is thinking this. So in order to not spoil the surprise, what do you do? You don't go into anybody's mind. You just let it go. Let the story play out. So then at the end, bam. Well, literally, bam. Okay. Now all of a sudden, boom. We realize what's happening. Shows tension as she's going through the story. You get a little tension there. Um, you start realizing, okay, maybe these people aren't really happy about this, especially like friends, you know, and Tess is like, oh no, I don't want it to be me or somebody else. So we start getting that throughout there, but we don't get the inside of someone's mind because that would ruin everything. The whole surprise. Now, in order to save time, I'll won't play the video because I want to make sure you have time for everything at the end to get it done. So irony. The opposite of what we, in situational or the opposite of what we expect to happen, happens. So in this story, well, first of all, when you read just the title of the story, Lottery, we think right away it's going to be something like. When you think Lottery, you usually think you're going to win something. What about this one? Is it, I mean, she won something. Is this something you want to win? No. No. The irony is right there. This is a lottery, but it's not the kind of lottery that we're used to. Okay, it's almost similar, similar to one other lottery, a uh, popular uh, novel about 10 years ago, was made into a movie series. Okay. Hunger Games, they had their lottery. All right, you can think that's not the one you wanted to win either. Okay, so it would be a good example there. So there's the irony of the situation. Suspense, how things are built throughout. I, the, you noticed that one clip earlier with uh, Jurassic Park. Um, it's so that suspense that they build, and you're just sort of waiting and, and uh, like you're hoping that nothing happens at that time. So um, that's what we're looking at here. And again, I want to make sure you get time to get everything done, so I don't have to work over the weekend. So I will move on from this. And then, you know, authors can build suspense in a lot of ways. Sometimes it's very slow, and it starts building up. You say, wait, they're, they're sort of tense. Um, people aren't too happy about this situation. What, what could this author be meaning by this? So in this story, you're wondering, well, what's going to happen? What are they going to win? Because you're like, there is a lottery. What are they going to win? How are they going to resolve this? Um, the mood gets more and more tense. And then you see people are like, no, I don't want to win. Well, I hope my friend doesn't pick the black dot. Well, why don't they want them to? Hmm. Okay. And then all of a sudden, it comes together. And then we realize, oh, now I know why at the, at the beginning, what were the boys doing? Picking up rocks. Yes. Putting them aside. In a whole big, <coughs> big pile of rocks. Sorry. Um, but, um, so, I'm going to go over the assignment. Uh, if you have been paying attention, that assignment will be not that difficult. Trust me. All right. But I just want to look at the lottery real quick. And as you're reading, I wanted to point out just a couple more things that hopefully can be helpful. Um, you have the children who are assembling this. Um, you have Mr. Summers. It's interesting how the one man's name is Mr. Summers and the other is Mr. Graves. You know, it's summer and he's in the head of the lottery. Mr. Graves, you know, it's a grave situation. You know, come up with the names there for symbolism. Um, so they're talking. Mrs. Hutchinson comes in. Um, I want to get to Old Man Warner. Something he says there that is interesting. Uh, there we go. Here we go. Old Man Warner snorted, pack of crazy fools. Listening to the young folks, nothing's good enough for them. Next thing you know, they'll be wanting to go back to living in caves. Nobody will work anymore. Live that way for a while. Used to be a saying, lottery in June, corn be heavy soon. First thing you know, we all be eating stewed chickweed and acorns. There's always been a lottery. Bad enough to see young Joe Summers up there joking with everybody. Anyone know somebody who, like, are you from people or you've seen somebody that somebody just sort of like, oh, those kids nowadays, they're ruining everything. You don't hear that. You hear that? Yeah. First of all, if you ever hear someone like that, just ignore me. You guys aren't. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so you're not at all. But you'll hear that. You'll be like, oh, they're just, they're, they're ruining everything. You know, this is the, what we're looking at here. Why are we changing? This is a man that wants to keep a lottery of stones people. Okay? If you look at it, who's really not thinking correctly here? Him. 
He's like, this is good. You know, pack of crazy fools. Pack of crazy fools who want what? Yes, I think those are pretty reasonable people, actually. Whereas here he is. And now somebody brought up the idea of ritual. And um, there are different societies, like, you know, like the Aztecs, I think, were famous for this. Other societies, too. Many societies, not just now. Um, this idea of sacrifice. Lottery in June, corn be heavy soon. What might that be inferring why the lottery started? We have the lottery, and of course, once we kill somebody, the gods will be appeased, and we'll have a lot of corn. And everything will be good. Okay, so... That's what we're looking at there. And then I just want to sort of go to a couple of things. Tessie, when Tessie uh, gets with, she, uh, Tessie wants to bring in who? Uh, to also draw, which tells us a little bit about her. Okay, she says, there's Don and Eva. Make them take their chance. Right. What does that say about her? Like most people, like you would think your parents would want to do what to you? No, hopefully not that. If they want to do that, we need to talk. No, hopefully they want to protect you. But here she is, she's like, oh wait, Don and Eva, you know, Eva's my daughter, come on. Why aren't they drawing with us too? So I don't get a chance to get fooled. So the only reason she's upset is because she has a chance to what? Die. Okay, which doesn't say much about her, okay, at all, as a person. Um, but she's just like, oh, come on, why aren't they going to do it too? Let's, you know, get them. And then, in the end, it's just always, you know, interesting. Uh, although the villagers had forgotten the ritual and lost the original black box, they still remembered to use stones. A pile of stones the boys had made earlier were, was ready. There were stones on the ground with the blowing scraps of paper, uh, come out of the box. Mrs. Delacroix selected a stone so large she had to pick it up with both hands and turn to Mrs. Del Dunbar, come on, and hurry up. So she picks up this big stone. Um, the children had stones already, and someone gave little Davy Hutchinson a few pebbles. Okay. And then they were upon her. Old Man Warner, of, of course, is like, come on, come on, everyone. And then they were upon her. Okay? So... It's interesting to, as you're reading it, just to sort of look and see what might she be saying. And think about why, of all the ways you could have had people, you know, kill Tessie, why might she have used stones? What are stones? What could they be symbolic of? Why do you use stones? You think about people and man, you think about the Stone Age, you know, the Stone Age. The Stone Age was when was when things were very what? Oh. Old, primitive. primitive. Okay, um, you know, things back, you know, so this old, this primitive, ideal I, era. The stones maybe are representative of this primitive mindset, possibly, in using that. So, you'll have the rest of the period to do the following. Um, yeah, this uh, assessment. I'm going to show it to you so you know what to do. Nope, don't want that. There we go. There we go. All right. So, um, 20 points. It's an, yes, this is your assessment over the lottery. We're going to be citing textual evidence supporting your ideas and all again, your understanding of complex text. First, you'll have vocabulary. Complete the following over each tier two vocabulary we uh, talked about the other day that were highlighted. Define each word using the definition given on the slides we went over. Provide the part of speech along with the word. Write a sentence commenting on the sto short story, The Lottery, using this word. Now, it's not to be the sentence from the story. It is to be a sentence showing you have an understanding of the lottery while also using the word correctly. Then you'll highlight the word and then provide a visual representation that connects to the meaning of that sentence. So, sounds complex, but here's profusely, okay? The definition, just go and find it. Those are on the slide the other day. All right, that slideshow was shared with you. Um, I can share it again if you need it. 
Okay, so the definition sentence. Hmm, how can I come up with my whole? Oh, here's one. I bet after Tessie Hutchinson was hit with many stones that she was bleeding profusely. Profusely. Oh, so there we go. Now, the visual representation, now that I just thought of that, might be a little tricky. Be creative, but don't be inappropriate, I guess. But does, but does that make sense? So you're just going to use a sentence telling me how something was a story. So she was bleeding profusely. All right. Now, don't use mine. So I'm not going to give you some fine perfunctory and talk about that in a way. It's how it's used in the story, petulantly and divine. The next one, questions on that? Clear. Next one says, identify two passages from the story that illustrate how Shirley Jackson creates suspense in the lottery and explain how each passage creates that suspense. So you'll come up a passage. If it's really long, just use the ellipsis. What's the ellipsis? It's a fun, fun word to say, and it's fun to use. We'll start, you can start off the sentence, okay, right here, then use your three dots, and then finishing. Does that make sense? You then just put the page number by. Okay? So that's all you'll have to do. And then explain how it creates suspense. So two passages and explain how they create suspense. And there's three points. I put the points of everything on the, the slide too. Archetype. Identify which character would be an example for each of the following archetypes and why these archetypes are important to obtaining a deeper meaning. So who would be an example of keeper of tradition? Name the character, why they're important. Innocent corrupted character, why they're important for a deeper understanding. I think you guys can do that. Irony, describe the irony of the lottery, and then come up with your own example of a situation that would be ironic and similar to the lottery. So what's something that would be your expectations are opposite? Okay. So that's you being a little creative in that. Point of view, choose two characters and give an example of what they might be thinking if this story was written in first person. The example needs to be at least three sentences and school appropriate. Because let's face it, you know, if that situation was going on, some people might be thinking some inappropriate words. But don't use that. So go ahead, come up with two characters. Who what, what do you think maybe, you know, little Davies think in this situation if you're even first person? You know, I know it's a little child, but you can be creative with this. Okay, so this is again more creative writing here. But first person, make sense? Symbolism, identify the following two objects from the story. Identify what the following two objects from the story actually symbolize. Explain your answer. So what? The black box itself, which contains, okay, all these slips of paper with the black dot and the one with the black dot on it. And the stones themselves. What is a deeper meaning. It's not just a rock. What else could it symbolize? That's not just a black box. What else could it symbolize? A deeper meaning. I'd like to die you more. Okay? And that is it. Questions on that at all? Is it understandable? Okay, good. All right. So I'm going to.